Hi and welcome to Nursing School Explain in this video on Addison's disease. But before we look into the details, let's review the hypothalamic pituitary and adrenal axis and how it regulates um, our hormones. So the hypothalamus releases corticotropin releasing hormone that stimulates the anterior pituitary to release ACTH or adrenocorticotropic hormone. That hormone stimulates the adrenal cortex to release glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, and androgens. And the easiest way to remember these three are the three S's, salt, um, salt mineral, uh, glucose, sugar, and sex hormones, androgens. And under normal circumstances, the level of these will be reported back to the hypothalamus by this negative feedback loop. And if there are enough of these floating around, the hypothalamus will then stop or decrease secreting CRH, which will lead to decreased production of ACTH, and then the production in the bloodstream will go down for a nice balanced system. And under normal circumstances, when ACTH is normal, the production of glucocorticoids helps us to respond to stress by, by secreting cortisol. Now, um, glucocorticoids also help with carbohydrate, protein, and fat metabolism. And when we are under stress, we're going to need increased sugar, which then stimulates the liver to produce more blood glucose by the process of gluconeogenesis. And also the cells use decreased glucose, which then leads to increased protein breakdown and increased fat synthesis to kind of keep everything in balance. For mineralocorticoids or salt, aldosterone is the main hormone here, which is a big part of the renin angiotensin and aldosterone system, otherwise known as RAS. And that usually responds to a low blood pressure. So when there's low blood pressure, the renal tubules will increase sodium and water reabsorption, therefore holding on to more fluid or volume and elevating that blood pressure. But in exchange at the renal tubule for the increased sodium reabsorption, potassium is excreted. And then we have our sex hormones, androgens, um, which are also important here. In Addison's disease, we have decreased ACTH, or also called adrenocortical insufficiency. So now we're dealing with decreased levels of ACTH, which will lead to decrease of glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, and androgens. So the causes of Addison's disease, primary Addison's disease is usually called by autoimmune disorders and cause, um, and is 80% of the causes for Addison's disease. And in that case, all three of the glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, and androgens will be decreased. If it's secondary adrenocortical insufficiency, that basically means it comes from somewhere else besides the adrenal cortex, and it's usually related to pituitary disorders. And what we'll see there is decreased glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, but no decrease in androgens. Unfortunately, signs and symptoms of Addison's disease are often not recognized or visible until about 90% of the adrenal cortex is destroyed by this autoimmune disease that's causing it. And they can be very vague, such as anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, weakness, salt craving, headache, fatigue, weight loss, joint pain, and then a very significant finding bronze-colored hyperpigmentation at sun-exposed areas, as well as orthostatic hypotension. And these here salt cravings and orthostatic hypotension can certainly be due to a lot of other disorders, but salt cravings here happens because we're now not able to preserve the salt and orthostatic hypotension because with unable to, being unable to preserve the salt and water, it'll lead to fluid volume deficit. Therefore, the patient can have orthostatic hypotension. Now, complications from Addison's disease is Addisonian crisis, and that can be life-threatening. Triggers can be stress 
or sudden withdrawal of steroids. The opposite of Addison's disease is called Cushing's disease. And that is when we have too much ACTH in the system. And that is 90% um, induced by steroids, by chronic administration of steroids. So now if suddenly these steroids are withdrawn, it can lead to the opposite of Addison's disease. Adrenoectomy, so if the adrenal cortex is suddenly removed, it cannot produce any of these uh, 3S uh, hormones and then will lead to an Addisonian crisis. Or if there is sudden destruction of the pituitary gland, such as in radiation, in, and that would be the treatment for Cushing's disease, which is the opposite, because the tumor would produce increased ACTH, but and we would want to get rid of that if it was the opposite Cushing's disease. So triggers can be stress, sudden withdrawal of steroids, adrenoectomy, or sudden pituitary destruction due to radiation. Signs and symptoms of Addisonian crisis would basically be all of these hormones would be decreased. So now for our glucose, glucocorticoids, the patient could suffer from hypoglycemia. For our mineralocorticoids here, so if we know that usually we reabsorb sodium and water, now this will lead to decreased sodium reabsorption, which then will lead to hyperkalemia because these two always balance each other out. If we can't reabsorb the sodium, we're also going to excrete more water, which will make the patient weak and cause fluid volume deficit or dehydration, which is evident by low blood pressure and increased heart rate and can lead to circulatory collapse. Hence, it's called an Addisonian crisis. Other signs and symptoms are fever, weakness, and confusion. And the confusion is mostly due because of the low sodium levels that can always be evident with any kind of alterations in mental status. Now, how is Addison's disease diagnosed? Uh, it's usually with an ACTH stimulation test. So now, if we're suspecting ACTH is low, we're going to give the patient IV ACTH and check the serum levels at 30 and 60 minutes. Normal response that's expected would be if we administer ACTH, we would expect the ACTH serum levels to rise. But if there's Addison's disease, the ACTH will go up, but we won't produce the cortisol here. So that won't, we won't be able to measure that. Um, if this is, there's an abnormal uh, test right here, then we can also test the corticotropic releasing hormone that would basically go up a step here and check if the hypothalamus is working on the pituitary. And if we have a pituitary disorder, it would mean that the pituitary is now not able to produce ACTH, which would basically mean that none of this can be measured and we would basically measure the ACTH in the serum. Lab results to be expected in, Addis in Addison's disease would be low sodium and chloride because again, we're not able to do the reabsorption here. Everything is decreased which then leads to hyperkalemia, which can lead to peak T waves on an EKG and can be dangerous. Uh, it'll lead to hypoglycemia, as we discussed over here, and we would want to evaluate a CT or MRI to see if there's any kind of structural defects to the adrenals or the pituitary gland. Now, nursing care for a patient with Addison's disease, if they are in a crisis and need uh, inpatient treatment, we would uh, monitor the vital signs and the neurologic status because we know that hyponatremia can lead to mental status changes. Certainly, we would have to monitor their electrolytes very diligently as well as their daily weight and INOs because they are at risk for fluid volume deficit. If the patient is treated on an outpatient basis, they will need glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids to be administered. They basically would need um, these hormones to be replaced because their adrenal cortex is not working. So glucocorticoids are recommended to be taken BID twice a day with two thirds of the dose in the morning and one third in the evening to mimic their, the circadian rhythm. 
If the glucocorticoids are taken at night only or more of a dose, it can lead to sleep disturbances because the circadian rhythm gets disturbed. Mineralocorticoids need to be taken once a day uh, and that would be fludrocortisone is one of those that would be um, prescribed for the patient. And if they are managed on an outpatient basis, besides medication teaching, we would also teach them how to monitor their blood pressure at home because we know they are at risk for low blood pressure, as well as teach them to increase their sodium intake because their kidneys can't really concentrate it, to manage their stress, to wear a medical alert bracelet, very important because we know that they can go into Addisonian crisis with increased stress, and they might need increased corticosteroids if they are ill with a minor illness such as uh, the flu or um, with increased activity, physical activity. And then they should also have an emergency dose of fludrocortisone available and that is usually 100 milligrams that they would be able to administer intramuscularly in case that they are detecting that they are at risk for Addisonian crisis. Thank you for watching this video on Addison's disease. Also watch the video on the opposite where the ACTH is increased, which is Cushing's disease, so that you can really understand the difference that these make in the sugar, salt, and sex hormones. Thanks for watching Nursing School Explained.